Welcome back to Inspired Word. I'm Chauncey Navarro, where we're doing a study through the book of the Revelation of Jesus. We're at the end of chapter 2. We're going through the seven letters to the churches. We're now on the church of Theatira. And we'll be going into chapter 3 after this and finishing up with the last three churches. Um, the, the church, the letter to the church of Theatira goes, um, and to the angel of the church of Theatira write, these things says the Son of God, whose eyes are like flames of fire and feet are like burnished bronze. Uh, I know your works, your love, your service, your faith, your patience, and as for your works, the last are more than your first. Now, once again, boy, these sound pretty good, you know. Uh, until he gets to that word, nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess of God, and teaches to seduce the servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Well, he goes on to say, I gave her time to repent of her sexual immoralities, and she wouldn't repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed, and those that commit adultery with her I will, will cause to go through the great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children with death, and the churches shall know that I am he that searches the hearts. Um, as he goes through this, you know, you have to understand in part two that um, first of all, usually when he's talking about sexual immorality, adultery, he directly relates to idolatry. So, and I believe this is twofold. I believe this represents both sexual immorality as well as spiritual immorality uh, in the church. The Jezebel in this picture here too. If you read the story in Kings of, of Je Second Kings of Jezebel, uh, you get an idea of the how she led the Israelites into idolatry, how she led the king of Israel to you know away from his God, and this is the area where Elijah went up against the prophets of Baal, and they had killed the prophets of God, and this is where Elijah had shut up the heavens for, from rain for three and a half years. I think it's interesting that it was three and a half years and that when Elijah returns at Passover time, once again, he'll shut up the heavens from rain for three and a half years. And so there's a direct correlation, a direct connection from the Old Testament as a type shadow of things to come for what's going to come in the future. I also relate the woman Jezebel in this to the whore on the back of the beast. It's, it's a uh, subtle connection on here. The mystery Babylon, the woman on the back of the beast that we're going to touch on later on in the book, there's a, a direct correlation here also as well, where God referred to Israel as a woman who went whoring around in the Old Testament. And we have this similar type picture once again here for a prophetic New Testament reference. But as it goes on in here, and I, I think it's kind of interesting also too where he says, you know, I will st strike her children dead and you will know that I am the Lord who searcheth the heart. And you look at what did he do to Egypt, to the firstborn, to deliver his people out. He struck the firstborn dead. And we continue on in this. He says, um, I will give each one of you according to your works now to you, I say, and to the rest of the attire, as many as do not have this doctrine, who do not know the depths of Satan, as they would say, I will put no other burden on you, but keep that which you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and they shall be dashed in pieces like the potter's vessel. As I also have received from my Father, I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So anybody that has an ear, take note. All, one of the things I want to take, make a point on this here is, at this point, he puts this where it was in the middle of the letter before where he talks about what the, the blessing to the overcomer. Now it's been put at the end. And it starts here where they put it at the end and it continues on the next four of them. 
But the reference to ruling with a rod of iron is a direct quote from Psalm 2. And if you read through Psalm 2, you can see the connections and how it puts it on here. But he's talking about him giving them power to rule with a rod of iron because we are the body of Christ. And so the same way that Christ will rule with a rod of iron, when he gives us authority to rule during the Millennium Kingdom, we also will rule with a rod of iron. Uh, you, th These are for those that overcome that are, are not tied into these areas of the sexual immorality, who are not eating food sacrificed to idols. So he's correlating over here, and, and I, I tie this on not just to the church of Theotira back at that time, but of course a future reference. You see in here where he makes a direct reference to the Great Tribulation. He makes uh, a, a direct reference to, to when he's coming. So there, there's definitely future tone tenses that come in on here. Now if we jump over to the parable in Matthew chapter 13 and you, you go to the fourth parable, being, this being the fourth church, and you can see a direct correlation here to a woman who takes leaven and puts it in three measures of, uh, of bread. And three measures of bread, that's directly referring to the fellowship offering. And that would be a horror to the Jew to look at that and say, you know, you don't put yeast in the fellowship offering. It's supposed to be unleavened without sin. That yeast represents sin. And here's where we see where she is, is putting sin into the midst of the church here, into the fellowship. And he goes on to say, uh, I will give him the morning star. The morning star in the Hebrew is Lucifer, which you see in the Old Testament where it referred to to Satan as Lucifer. Here in the New Testament, there's a reference to Jesus. And it was a Jewish idiom, an expression of one who was exalted. So, you know, this is one of those cases where not being familiar with the, the idioms of the culture that, you know, people have taken it in different contexts, like that that's Satan's name or different things in that case. But it actually refers to Satan that way and it refers to Jesus that way because like I said it's an expression. It's an idiom the same way you would say Mitsubishi which means three diamonds or what is, is three diamonds but actually means uh, excellence, the finest, the best in Japanese. It's a Japanese idiom. Anyway, um, my name is Chauncey Navarro. I appreciate you guys coming here to Inspired Word as we're going through the book of the Revelation of Jesus. I hope you're enjoying this study. We're going to start on chapter 3 in our next one, and I'll see you back here at Inspired Word.